Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to Edible Gardening. It is just me here today uh, updating you on our baby chicks. So we have so much to share with you. We have pretty much finished building their coop and their run, so we'll do a tour of that. Uh, I will do an updated video on what they're currently eating, but I have some updates in regards to their health that I wanted to share with you. I will show you what they're looking like right now and how they're doing and our current setup for them. They have grown, I believe, I believe they're around six weeks old now. I have to double check the date that we got them, but they're six or seven weeks old. Um, they definitely had some health issues in the beginning, so we've had to switch up what they're eating. And obviously because they've grown much more, we've moved them out of our house. So if you haven't seen our uh, previous uh, chick update video, I will um, put it in the card up here or up there <laughs> so you guys can watch that. But our chicks did have seizures. Um, it started off with one of the chicks having seizures around 10 days or 11 days old. It was shortly after we released the video, uh, our very first video introducing our chicks. Um, so one of the chicks started having pretty bad seizures or spasms. We don't, aren't sure what to call it. Uh, we haven't seen much information online about it. I will go through everything that happened, everything that they were experiencing and what we did to help them. And they are thriving so good now. So we have lots to share. So I'll just start with the first chick that was having seizures. Uh, my kids named him Fluffy. So that's his name. So Fluffy was having, um, it started off with one seizure. Uh, one of the chicks kind of stepped over him to get to food and it, he ended up just straightening out. He was very stiff, so his legs were behind him and he was just kind of like a, a stiff, straight little chick laying down on the ground, kind of shaking. Um, it, it lasted for about a couple minutes and then he came out of it. And then he had a second one of those seizures or spasms um, maybe a couple minutes later. So it started off like that. He went from being super alert, eating all the food, being really like full of life to having two seizures out of nowhere. After he had his second seizure, um, we obviously moved him. So we put, got a new box, removed him from the rest because we obviously realized he's really sensitive and we didn't want them to, um, you know, bother him or, or trigger any further seizures. So we put him in his own box with his own water, food, wood chips, all that good stuff and his own heat lamp. And after around day 10 or 11, when he had his first couple seizures, the following day, he started having seizures every couple minutes and they were pretty bad. So I want to explain what it looked like. And this is going to be weird, I know, but I know that there are probably other people who have baby chicks who are experiencing something similar and I haven't found any help really on YouTube. So I want to make this video to explain what we went through and hopefully it helps someone. So to explain it, when he started having the rest of his seizures, kind of what it looked like is he would shake for a second and then he'd put his little neck all the way down. So it's like almost on his tummy or the ground, his head would be down and he would just shake for a minute and then he would slowly come back up and continue on with his day. But this was happening every couple minutes and he went from being so full of life and energetic to all of a sudden having zero energy and he wouldn't eat or drink he wouldn't do anything. He just sat there having seizure after seizure. So we also noticed he was doing something else. What we noticed was, and this is going to look weird if I try to do it, but I do want to try to show you as well. Um, he looked like he was having a hard time breathing or, or like he was choking or gasping for air. So he would kind of open up his little beak um, and would kind of be like, like that a little bit. Like you can see he's straining to get air out. There would be no sound, but his beak would be open and he's kind of gasping with his head up and then he would go back to normal. So he was having those gasps and the seizures. And what, what started to happen was he started to lose a lot of weight uh, because, because he wasn't eating or drinking. This all happened within a couple days. He was losing weight. He was having seizure after seizure. He couldn't keep his head up. So he would be standing there and all of a sudden his head would just drop to the ground, like slowly go down because he couldn't even keep it up. Um, he was just so lethargic, just all the things. And we thought that was the end. So we actually contacted the, um, the breeder who we got them from and he said that when he would have chicks who went through the same thing they usually didn't make it now i know a lot of you are probably thinking did he have merrick's disease 
we don't believe he did no um he i don't think any of the chicks were vaccinated we got them from the breeder and they were about a week old I, again i don't think any of them were vaccinated but we don't believe he had merrick's disease and i'll continue on and explain why shortly so this went on for a few days what we did food wise now obviously because he wasn't eating is we had to feed him with a syringe i didn't have any video footage of this because it was kind of a hectic few days but um just to explain very quickly what we did i would take egg yolk like he wouldn't eat solid foods at this point so he was kind of like having a little baby at home we would mix um some egg yolk from organic free range eggs i put a little bit of green tea and a little bit of maple syrup or molasses for some energy we also put a little bit of coconut water for electrolytes we put a, a liquid multivitamin. I should have brought it to show you guys. Maybe I'll show you upstairs. Um, but it's actually a bird multivitamin that we got from a local uh, health um, a pet shop here, but it works really well. We also gave him probiotics and we threw in some um, like mackerel, just some different fats for him. Uh, there were probably some other things in there, but I don't remember at this point. So we would mix it up and we would feed him literally in a syringe to his beak. We'd put a drop on his beak and it would go in his mouth and he would eat it. And he didn't even want to do that, but we were literally forcing him. For three nights, I like nursed him through the night. I wouldn't go to bed. I just sat there feeding him, making sure he's drinking water. We would mix water into the egg yolk so he was getting both because he wouldn't drink. So it was the first two days he did that. Um, we noticed he was just super lethargic. So what I also did, um, I am a homeopath, so I gave him um, a homeopathic. I gave him Aconitum napellus, which is aconite at the potency 30 CH. I dropped it into his egg yolk mixture and then just syringed that into his mouth. Within like half hour to an hour of doing that, he did get more energized and more alert and he started to eat a little bit on his own. So that we saw some good improvement there. By the following morning, uh, after giving him the homeopathic, he was all himself again. He was still having the seizures, but he was feeding himself, he was walking around, chirping really loud. So we thought, okay, we're we're at the end now. He's doing good, we're, we're past that, that dark period. Uh, the next day, he then again regressed and he started having the seizures more frequently, longer and worse than we've seen yet. He got to the point where he didn't get up, he was lying down, wouldn't even eat or drink, just lying down shaking seizure after seizure had zero energy and i honestly we were i was talking to my husband and i said he's dying any minute he's not going to make it through the night and so the seizures that he had from start to finish lasted about a week um maybe a little longer and that night he wouldn't sleep so i stayed up with him was watching him i maybe slept a couple hours and then when i woke up he was up alert doing all the things and we were kind of confused because we were like uh, last night he looked like he was going to die so what we then realized that morning when we woke up when he was walking around the three of the other chicks started having the same thing he had so the seizures the gasping for air where they're like opening their beak like kind of looks like they're gasping and then they go back to normal they were having like the, the same spasms or seizures and that the gasping for air so we were like okay it's either a virus because they're all having this issue or it's nutrient deficiencies. So we did research more and more about what our chicks need. And there's so many different opinions. There's a fly here. There's so many different opinions on Google, on the internet of what they need to eat. And we are first time chick owners. So I was like, who do we, who do we believe? When we first made their initial food mix, that was a recipe we got on YouTube. Um, and on Google actually saying that it was really good for chicks, but what we came to realize is maybe they're still not getting enough nutrition. So anyway, long story short, what we ended up doing is buying some good quality chick feed from our area locally, which has all of the amino acids, fats, vitamins, minerals, everything that they need to thrive. So we completely switched their feed, still gave them a little bit of like the flax and stuff, but mainly just the chick feed. Um, we did that for both because we noticed that they were all starting to have seizures and even though Fluffy was doing so much better, he still was having the seizures and those issues. Um, we also then realized the chicks used to sleep close together in a ball and then now they started sleeping on their own spread out. And we knew that we have to raise the heat lamp every week to give them less and less heat. But what we realized is that we didn't do is we didn't raise it up enough. So we also believe that they were too warm, which does cause weakness. And we noticed that they had all of them pretty much since we had them had loose stools. So 
I did more research and I realized that if they're having loose stools, it could be because they're too warm, so they're drinking more water, causing the stools to be loose. So we were like, okay, it's nutrient deficiencies, or it could be maybe they're too warm, um, which is causing like them to be a little bit weaker, and, and that's why maybe they're having like these seizures or spasms. So we did a couple things. I know this video is all over the place, but trying to explain what we did. We switched their chick feed. We stopped giving them like the peas and the sunflower seeds and the flax. Apparently they can't digest that stuff too well at that age. So we switched their chick feed, started giving them just the mealworms, egg yolk that was like hard boiled and their chick feed. And then we gave them water and in their water, we put the multivitamin for them and some probiotics. I also was still giving them the diatomaceous earth for parasites. And then uh, we raised their heat light, their light quite high. So much higher than we had it. And the next day, not one of them had a seizure. And then the following day, not, no seizures again. Up until now, we're at about six weeks. They are so big, thriving, they're growing. Fluffy went from being a tiny little sick chick to being the one of the biggest of the bunch. Uh, so he's doing so well. They're all eating, they're so cute. So again, just doing really well. We also noticed that after switching their food, raising the heat light uh, or the heat lamp, their, their stools are proper now, so they're, they're normal, fully formed stools with that white cap at the end that they should be having. So they're doing really well. So to recap, we believe that the trigger for the seizures, uh, because they're doing so well now, their trigger for the seizures were one, nutrient deficiencies, two, too warm, uh, and then I guess that was it. So we raised the light, gave them a different feed, and they seem to be doing really well. They are all back together now. After Fluffy got really strong and healthy, we put him back with the rest. Uh, they, they're doing like, we have a brooding bar for them, so they sleep on their bar. They're just doing really, really well now. So I'm going to take you guys over there and show you where they are. They're currently in our garage. It's still slightly too cold here in Canada to put them outside just yet, because they're still small. So uh, they are in our garage. Once the weather's a little bit warmer, we are going to move them outdoors in our new chicken run that we built for them, and we will do a tour of that. So I hope that that helps you guys. Um, they, again, you know, at the time they were, we thought, at least fluffy was not going to make it and they are so strong and healthy now that we know that it was probably nutrient deficiencies uh, we gave them a lot of mackerel as well to support their nervous system it has selenium in it as well we believe that that also helped reduce their seizures and they loved the mackerel so we gave them wild caught so they had a lot of good different foods in their lifetime now they're still eating their chick feed but we give them all kinds of fruits and vegetables um, they're getting mealworms still the egg yolk I still give them mackerel here and there so they're still getting a lot of different types of foods but they're thriving so I'm loving it and I can't wait till they're old enough to be able to just um, you know, like put them outside and they can just eat essentially our compost and things like that so anyway that's all for the updates I'm going to show you the multivitamin and the chicks and what they're doing right now okay so these are what we've been giving them this is what we've been giving them for the vitamins it's just um, a potency high potency multivitamin for small birds that we got from our pet store but it has honestly been working really well for them it's got the A's the D's the E K all the things and they have been doing really really well we just add this to their water dish and then for probiotics I've been giving them this, this is the one that actually my kids take <laughs> it's got um, lactobacillus and bifidiobacterium strains so it's a great probiotic they'll obviously get probiotics once they're outside eating out of the dirt and the soil but you know right now it's just important to make sure that they're having um, a good digestive system so I've been giving them a little scoop of this in their water as well hi you guys okay so they are in their um, chicken coop it's not fully built we still have to add the sides which is where they will be um, laying their eggs but we have the top off right now so we can still access them we have their heat lamp we still have their water their food and their water the food uh, is the chick feed in there we sprinkle mealworms around here for them to peck at there's their little brooding bar which we're gonna have to make bigger as they grow but they're just getting so big now and really tall so again, I think they're, I want to say they're six weeks old or seven weeks old now. Getting so hairy. Are you guys getting hairy? So this one standing is Seggy. And then you've got Fluffy. This is the little guy who wasn't doing so well, but is thriving now. He does have a crest. Um, this guy here is uh, Sven. My kids named all of them. And then you got Anna, 
and Olaf. <laughs> so there's a, a theme here. But they're doing so well and eating, drinking, healthy, healthy stools. We change their wood chips every other day so that it's clean. So they're just doing really, really well. But yeah, let's see if I can get the camera in without them pecking it. Hi. Hey. Hello, what's the camera doing? I think they're sleepy. Okay, so I'm just out here in the garage. Um, one last... <laughs> you guys okay? They, they fight sometimes. One last thing that I wanted to mention that I forgot to uh, before I let you go is that Fluffy, who was the one who was having the really bad seizures for the longest time, did have a big crest. Um, so the crest is like the part of the skull that's elevated and apparently from research, silkies are more susceptible to this. They have a big crest and if the, their head gets pecked, they can get some um, brain damage essentially. So it can trigger seizures as well. We do think that was also one of the triggers for his seizures aside from the nutrient deficiencies and the heat and everything else because he was the smallest and the youngest when we got him and the others did try to clean his feathers a lot and they were pecking at his head quite a bit in doing so. So we do think that is definitely something to consider. Um, I do think that was an issue for him is he just has like a little tuft of hair but apparently we thought it was just fluff. That's why my kids called him fluffy but it's actually a vaulted skull which means his brain is a little bit higher up and can be pecked and it's pretty easy to get some neurological damage there. So we think that's what's been happening as well. So a lot of different things, but overall they are doing so, so, so well. They're eating and, and just so healthy. So once we move them outdoors, we'll give you guys a tour of their coop and their run what they're currently eating. We also have a greenhouse that they're going to be roaming in a little bit too. So we'll show you all of that stuff then. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.